Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about the pros and cons of going to school versus being self-taught if you want to go in the game industry. And remember, this is from my point of view of going to school to learn programming, but this probably has equal measure for art and design and other roles that you want to do in games. <clears throat> so let me talk about, for a second, yesterday I talked about a university class that I taught because I I love being in school, and I've said that. I really liked being at UCI, so it was nice to come back and give a little back. Uh, a few weeks before that, I talked about how my love for school and all the skills that I think I learned while in school, whether from school or just people I went to school with, the skills that I learned to make games. So this is kind of on top of those. Um, I've been accused in the past, and I'm sure it's happening in comments now, that I'm anti-self-taught, and that is not true. I went to school. School was great for me. But one of the best programmers I ever worked with was entirely self-taught. The programming director at Interplay, Jay Patel, was self-taught. And I learned a ton from that man. He was a really, really good programmer. And he knew techniques that I didn't learn in school, which let me go over what I think the pros and cons are of going to school to learn whatever topic you want to learn about. And that will lead me into some pros and cons, I think, for when people are looking for a job or thinking of switching jobs in, in the game industry. <clears throat> so let me talk about pros and cons. I think the obvious pro of going to school is it is something a lot of employers look for. If you have a degree, they're like, oh good, you have a degree in programming or you have a degree in art or you went to Full Sail or you went to DigiPen, great. But what they're really looking for is experience. And yes, school is a kind of experience. Work is experience. And I see people go, well, how do I get experience? How do I get work experience if no one will hire me? And I've said this, demos. People who come in and go, I wish to make games and I wish to code user interface. Here is a game demo I made with a really nice user interface. Those people go to the front of the queue. And honestly, there's not a lot stopping you from doing that, especially in this day and age. Got a whole video about that. But some of the, there are other pros to going to school other than, hey, that's what people look for. First of all, Schools, and especially universities, are very structured places for learning. They've been doing it a long time. They kind of know what they're doing. They provide classes on specific topics, um, additional study sessions with and without a TA on those particular topics. I was never more frustrated as a grad student, then when people said the class was too hard and the teacher wasn't good, and I was the TA and I never saw them at, I had two different sessions a week and I never saw this person. I'm like, I don't even know who you are. How, how did you never ever come to a study session and then at the end of the quarter decide this class was bad? So universities are designed to help people study. And it's not just the classes, it's the surroundings. Um, they're very conducive to studying. There are libraries. There are usually big open green areas if you want to sit outside. There's lots of quiet areas to tuck into and study. And lots of other people are doing it too. So it's, it's easy to study when you look around and everybody else is studying too. And that actually leads me into the thing about being groups. I know a lot of people don't like working in groups, but when you're in a school and you're studying in a group, this is great because you have fellow students you can ask questions to. Maybe they just figured it out and they thought of a way of thinking about it. You can study together. You can work through problems together and figure things out. A lot of people don't do that and they don't make use of the fact that they're in this class with 20, 30, hundreds of other people. You can make use of that. And if you are someone who likes learning on your own, you can still learn on your own. I, no one's going to stop you. No one, if, if you want to study a topic that there's no class for or you want to go a little farther ahead and maybe read some chapters in the book in your class that aren't assigned, you can do that. And especially if you you have a light quarter or light semester, you know, you're only taking three or four classes instead of five or six or it's the summer and you're working, 
maybe you can, you know, study a little bit outside of that. So those are all the advantages I see to going to school other than just here's a degree. Now, there are a lot of cons to going to school too. I just mentioned working in a group and I've talked being in school will teach you all the negative things about being in a group, which you will encounter when you get in the game industry. You have to work with a bunch of people. Some of these people won't do their job and they will decry any attempt that anyone will point out they're not doing their job. They're literally not getting their work done and they will hide that fact and they will argue that they are or they will argue they were given too much work. There's a lot of things that will happen. Yes, sometimes there's a really bad manager who threw too much work on someone and then they got buried. But there's usually more than one person on a project. You know, the game director doesn't exist in a vacuum. He's got a boss. There are producers and APs. So I usually find that when people are in a group and they're complaining about other people in the group, it's not as bad in the game industry as it was at university. You're often assigned into a group by a teacher and then at the end of the quarter or semester you're like here's our here's our project and there's nobody to deal with there's nobody to go to except the teacher if you're having trouble with someone on the group and this will happen i guarantee you may have a few good groups but eventually you're going to get in with a bad group and there's going to be that one person who wants to coast or the one person who's in over their head and doesn't know how to do what you're trying to do and another con of being at the university is you kind of have to go at the speed of the class now, yeah, you can read ahead and everything, but some people get bored at the rate at which a class is going, or they get overwhelmed quickly. You start a class and it's got a prereq and you don't remember everything from that class. And now you're over your head. They're like, oh God, they expected me to remember quaternions. Oh shoot. The nice thing about studying on your own is you can go at your own speed. And that's good if you have that self-motivation to keep you going. Another... Um, con of university is to get a degree you have to take a lot of classes and frequently you will find yourself in classes that you don't care about you know you're not going to ever use this you're not interested in it but you have to take it and i will tell you i went to an engineering school for my undergraduate degree i was given a lot of classes and things i'm like thermodynamics is interesting but i don't really care about it and i don't see me using this as a programmer but I had to take it because every engineering student had to take these four or five core classes their second year. A big con of university is that you often aren't taught what you want or what you need to know. <clears throat> when I was coming back to UCI to teach and I was talking to Dan Frost, who I was co-teaching with, I said, by the way, I have a huge complaint about what I was taught at UCI because there were huge holes in my knowledge. I was never taught how to debug or how to optimize code. It never comes up. You're taught data structures and algorithms and neural nets and automata theory and all these different things, but no one ever says, hey, when you're going to code something that doesn't work, how do you fix it? Hey, you're going to code this and it uses too much memory or runs slowly, how do you fix that? No one teaches you that. When I mentioned it to him, he said, yeah, a lot of professors here are against that. So I went to talk to the dean of the school, who used to be my thesis advisor. And his response was interesting. He said, it sounds like you want to make UCI into a trade school. And I was like, no. But if you think even academic programmers don't need to know how to debug and optimize, that's insane. I, I saw it happen. Um, we got a supercomputer at UCI and it had like a gig of memory. And the first thing a physics teacher did, a physics professor for research, was he allocated a 1,000 by 1,000 by 1,000 array. Boom, all the memory's gone. You know, sparse arrays do exist. You could have used that. Which gets me into another con of university. There are some really bad teachers. There are people who don't really have any connection to what degrees are used for in this day and age, or they're just bad at getting their ideas across, or they're strict in ways that don't need to be and then aren't strict in places they should be. And let me tell you something. I had a teacher at University of Virginia who was so bad that we would get in arguments. I got a better grade in their class than they thought I should deserve, but they had to give it to me. I complained about this teacher to the dean while I was still there. 
And when I got my first alumni letter about donating, I said, I cannot in good conscience donate one dime to this school as long as teachers like this get tenure. So I've had my bad experience, but don't get me wrong. I loved my time at the University of Virginia. I just, that one teacher was so bad that it just left this, it, they made me hate math for a while. That's how bad they were. They taught a math class and they did such a bad job at teaching it and were so unnecessarily mean that it just made me go, I don't want to do, I, I just don't want to do math anymore. I don't want to be anywhere near this department. So that can happen. And if it happens to you, my best recommendation is to try to compartmentalize it. I don't like that teacher, but I do like UBA and I do like school. The final, uh, well, the second to the last con I can think of is in this day and age, there are online videos that teach you almost anything. And you can learn it on your own. And as long as you don't need someone to talk to, to ask questions of, you can learn a lot more from videos and at your own pace than you can learn from school. And that's true for not just, like I've said, learning game engines, but learning code, art, any uh, program or tool you want to use. There's probably a video that explains how to use it. So it makes me look at university and go, hmm, there's a lot of stuff I can already learn that you teach. Still think it's good, but maybe not as good. And then finally, the university is expensive. And trust me, I know that. I wouldn't use student loans when I was an undergraduate and I did work study and I got help from my mom. I still went into debt. When I went to grad school, that debt was suspended. Um, and luckily I got a, I, I did get a scholarship for grad school and I did work, I worked as a TA and an RA, a research assistant in grad school. But as soon as I graduated and went to Interplay, boom, all my student loans became due. And I found myself paying rent and a car payment and all the things you have to pay and then student loans on top of that. And it was rough. It was rough. So I see why people want to avoid that. And so I hope giving this list of pros and cons makes you realize that deciding whether or not to go to school and where to go to school is a very personal thing. And for me, it's very similar to when people come to me at work and say they're thinking of quitting. I usually ask them why, like, what is it that's bothering you here? And what do you think you're going to get if you go somewhere else? Because I always warn them. The first thing I say is the grass isn't greener at other companies. What it basic, what, what I see it as is different companies promote different things. They're good at some things and bad at others. What you need to figure out is what you care about. What do you really need in a work environment versus what you want and like in a work environment versus things that bug you? or just an annoy you so much that you can't work in a work environment that doesn't provide it. Some people want flexible hours. Some people demand work from home. Some people want good insurance. Some people want longer vacation, parental leave. These are all good things to have, but you have to realize some people don't care anything about those things. You may go, good, people don't care about good insurance. I've met a lot of 20 somethings who don't have a primary care physician, don't go to the dentist. You know, they have, they're still in that I'm immortal phase and I will never ever be hurt. They don't really look or care about good insurance. Um, they may care about flexible hours and long vacation. Um, single people may never even glance at the parental leave that a company provides. Why would they care? Um, so you have to realize this is a personal thing. What companies offer and what people care about are very different. So you may have someone, a friend of yours, go, oh, I love it at this company. And you go there and you're like, this is terrible. The parental leave is awful. The insurance is awful. And they're like, yeah, I don't care about that. So... My recommendation is when you go to interview at, an, at a company, look for those things. Look for the things you care about. Figure out what you care about first and then look for them and then ask if you don't see it. Ask the people interviewing you if you have an opportunity. If you get, go to lunch and they bring some other employees, ask them. Take, it, take an opportunity to do that. This is exactly what I tell people to do about school. Figure out what you want to get out of it and what you need. If you need structure, if you need fellow people to work with, to study with, if you need an environment that is designed to help you study, you might wanna to go to school. If you wanna learn at your own pace, if you can watch a video and go, I understand Unity now, I understand C Sharp, you just you may wanna skip school. But then when you go to a interview, I hope you bring along a demo. So those are my thoughts on school and the pros and cons of going there. 
For me, it was mostly a pro with some con. For some people, it's a lot of con. So that's my idea on school versus self-taught.